Hello, hello. Hello, guys. Happy Sunday. Wow. <laughs> December. Can you guys believe it? That's what the calendar says. So I don't know where this year has gone. How about y'all? Um, thanks, guys, for joining me. I had plans and plans and plans to come um, on many times in November. And let's just say the month got away from me. And I wasn't even sure if I was going to come on today because I don't really have like anything painted planned, but I'm going to show and share how I love to paint um, trees and then share some things that are coming up. And I just wanted to say hi and connect with you guys. It's been forever, forever. Okay, so like I said, I have so missed you guys. I had a fantastic time at OKC Painting Palooza, and I was going to come home and do a recap and do some lives and some giveaways and I came home, was home for about two days, and had to go to the doctor for a double ear infection and a sinus infection. And I'm still, uh, I have that lingering cough, which many of my friends, I was talking to a, um, a friend of mine yesterday in Colorado, and they were saying the same thing. It's just that constant, constant cough. So thankfully mine is at a minimum now, but it's still there, a little pesky. Um, but I... I usually push through when I'm not feeling well, um, and I decided that I was going to take time to rest, which I did almost all of November. So um, it's kind of a blur. Oh, Joni, you're so welcome. I loved doing the lives from OKC, and again, like I said, I had all these plans to come back and do them and talk to you guys about the convention, and um, so it might seem a little strange that I'm talking about it now, a month later, but um, had a, such a fantastic time. It's such an awesome, awesome, well put together convention. Um, we have very few conventions left. And, you know, in order for them to succeed, we have to, um, as teachers and educators and students and painters and artists, go. Um, I know that Zoom has made things so much easier. I am so blessed and thankful that I've um, met many of you on Facebook. Um, but I love it even more when I get to meet you in person and paint with you in person. So I'm one of those that I'm going to keep doing the online thing. Um, so let me flip this camera down here. I want to share a couple things with you for letting me know that. Would love for you to share. Um, I am going to share some giveaways in just a minute, but I wanted to um, tell you guys about this Friday. I'm going to be on DecoArt's Facebook page. Um, doing some fun, easy glass painting. Um, so at one o'clock, I believe, yes, one o'clock on DecoArt's Facebook page this Friday, um, I'm going to be doing some fun, easy glass painting. The um, snowflakes, hello, couldn't be easier than with the DecoArt glass uh, paint marker. Hello. So fun and easy to use. So I'm just going to share a couple of um, designs. Look how fun this one is. A couple different ways to paint holly. And then did you know you can use stencils on glass? Do you see that? Isn't that fun? I just did a buffalo check red on the bottom of the glass. So fun and festive, colorful. And then on this one, just some simple snowflakes. Let it snow around the base with some more snowflakes. And again, all that with the paint pen. So fun, fun, fun. Hope you guys will join me Friday on DecoArt's Facebook page, one o'clock. I'm going to be painting glass and sharing some really cool tips and tricks um, on how to um, paint that up. So I'm gonna move it over. So I just taught at Oklahoma um, at OKC Painting Palooza. I did my um, old fashioned Christmas. So I love this piece. It's on one of those wooden, um, canvas panels, an old drawer pull and the, tr and the truck. Now you can get the truck and the e-packet for this, um, at cdwood.com. Okay. So I'm not sure if they have it up yet, but it's been sent to them. So, but I, I love painting trees and I love, I like painting them with an angle brush. So I'm going to share that with you. Um, but again, the truck shape, you can just buy on its own from cdwood.com. 
Um, you can also get the e-packet on my website if you wanted to. All right. So let me just kind of share and break the tree thing down for you guys. So I, I love, as you know, painting in my art journal. So one day I had extra paint on my palette and I just started playing around, painting some trees. And then this is kind of my idea book. So I'll create in here, low stress, don't have to think about too much, and then, oop, then create a design from it. So from that page, I then created my Winter Wonderland. This e-packet is up on my website, and, um, and I've taught it on Zoom a couple times. So let me just put that down. But I love the dimension of the trees and how airy they are. Um, you can paint them with any brush you'd like, a flat brush, um, a fan. I'm sure you've seen Bob Ross paint them with a fan. Um, so my friend Nicole in Canada is killing it with her trees and her paintings. Oh my gosh, amazing um, landscapes and stuff that she's been doing. So. Um, and I wish I had her link. I don't. So I love the truck too, Debbie. It was fun. It was fun, fun to paint. So, um, and I have another one that I taught at OKC that had a little snow cat. I could not find that for the life of me today when I was looking for it. But such an easy piece to paint. And I think the trees are very easy. So for my friend Janet Mitchell, I hope you're watching this <laughs> um, because she asked me to do a tutorial on trees. And so when I was trying to decide what I was going to do today, I thought that will be a perfect lesson um, just to share with you guys on how I do my trees. Okay, so I'm going to move this to the side and get out a little diagram, a little diagram of a tree. And I have to fix the lighting over here. I use a fan for trees. Debbie, yes, I used to as well. Um, and again, th they work great. Whatever brush works great, feels great for you, by all means, use that brush. Um, again, I'm gonna fix this lighting, see if that will, there we go. Okay, so what I want you to see as I'm, as I'm painting this tree, um, you know, very thin at the top, and how the branches go out but then they also come forward, okay? So let me grab a pen. So what I want you to see is, does that pen even work? That pen doesn't work. <laughs> Let's get one that works. So we have some, some branches that go there, right? We have some branches that go there. We have some branches that come down. Not that you can see that black marker. So as I'm putting my strokes together, I'm thinking of that slight little curve. You see that little curve on those petals? Those petals, oh my goodness, Sandy, hello. So it has a slight little curve for those branches. So a little bit straight, that one goes up. So as I'm doing this, I'm kind of doing a little dance with my brush. So let's get some paint <clears throat> and I'm just going to use, um, you can use your regular acrylics Americana, my favorite, the media line. This is what I'm going to use right now. Um, so I'm going to use sap green. I do have these on my website now. They're on sale and there's a promo code. Um, if you use art, A-R-T, all capitals you'll get an additional discount, okay? So that's sap green, and then one of my go-to colors, Payne's Gray. I'm gonna get a little bit, hi, Vanessa, good to see you on. Um, some green gold. And then a little bit of white. Okay, and I'm gonna use my 3 8 angle. Okay, now I primarily use the toe of the brush um, and hopefully my camera angle will be fine. I might have to move it to get my hand out of the way. But let's zoom in. Right up there. Okay, so I'm going to take my 3 8 angle brush and pick up 
green, and Payne's gray. So sap green, Payne's gray. And even though I'm using the toe, I just load the whole brush, okay? So the first thing you wanna do, and another reason I love to paint with the angle brush, it's got a nice chisel edge. It's going to make that very first initial top of the tree. And then I'm gonna turn it over so that the toe of the brush is down, all right? And so I'm just going to lightly tap it, lightly tap it, lightly tap it, lightly tap it. So see what's happening is you get a little bit of the back of that brush that's tap, oh, let's get on camera here, that's tapping that brush right there. It's getting the toe and a little bit of that. So it's creating almost like that little drop down thing that you get when you um, use a fan brush even. Okay, so I can decide how long my tree is going to be, put in my trunk, and then just keep going out. So very short, thin, not coming out too far. As you start to come out, you can, let's pick up more paint. As you start to come out, you can come out a little bit further, okay, and leaving space in between. So I'm just tapping on that toe, tapping on that toe, okay, tap, 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 and then I'll show you how to come back in and fill it in, because it's going to look a little Charlie Brownish until we get it filled in, and I typically will do it as I'm painting the tree, um, just so I can see how it's coming together, but I don't want to confuse you. I want you to see how it is once you put all these on. And again, slightly up. Slightly up. I'm going to bring that a little bit further, like almost straight down. Bring one out here. And then sometimes I'll just take my brush if I'm on snow or grass or whatever, I just take that green, kind of just give me a little bit of a shadow, okay? Pick up a little bit more, come over here and just, again, that toe is down, I'm tapping, I need to zoom in down here so you guys can see, okay? So tap, 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 come back to the trunk, tap, 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 Pick up a little bit more paint. Okay, so once you get this tree, let's zoom out here. In, out, in, out. Hi, Sylvia. Okay, so once you get that basic tree shape on, you can come back with your green and your paints gray, your darkest color, and start kind of tapping in here in the center. So I'm just randomly tapping, and what it's doing is it's filling that tree in. So little taps. I don't want to go too far out, but it's that right there that you're putting in is going to give that tree, you know, like that roundness because it looks like there are additional branches all the way around the other side, which there is. And then again, just tap, 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 filling that in. Okay, so little taps. And you know how you get really good at painting these? As with everything, you practice, <laughs> okay? And play around with it, play around with the, um, you did not thin the media fluid down. Did you know, Robin, I didn't. I just took it straight from the, you know, straight from my palette, okay? So my brush, got it wet, dried it off on my paper towel, loaded it up with the green, and then the paint's gray, all right? Now, what I like to do sometimes is come in and I'll put almost like a little V or a Y at the end of these branches, okay? Just to, again, give them a little bit of fullness, but, but a really good idea is to look online, look at some clip art, look at some line drawings of trees, kind of get that shape, and then just play and practice and have fun. 
All right, so once you get that on, I'm gonna wipe off my brush. I'm not gonna wash it out, I'm just gonna wipe it off really well. Okay, now would you thin the regular acrylic? No, Cindy, not necessarily. All right, and I'll do one with the regular acrylic too so that you can see, because um, I wanna show you a couple of times. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna come in this color, green gold, beautiful but it will show up so, so bright on our tree. And I don't want that at first. So I'm gonna load some of the sap green and then on the toe, I'll pick up some of that green gold. Okay, so there's sap green on the whole brush, green gold on the toe. I'm just gonna work that in. And you're not gonna see that big of a difference now, but what I'm gonna do is come in and just tap on the toe and I'm random. Do you see how I'm moving down that tree? I'm not trying to hit every single branch. I'm just highlighting, get a little bit more of green gold here and there, a little too yellow. Some of that green gold in there. Okay. And then wipe off my brush. So you can see a little bit of that green gold, right? So what it will do is just gives a really nice highlight to your tree. Now, I wiped off my brush really well. I'm gonna pick up white on the toe of the brush. Just kind of work that in. I don't wash my brush out because I don't want this to be stark white. I want there to be that tint of green. Now, we're gonna start building up our tree with a little bit of white, so almost like a little snow. And I don't care if that green underneath is wet because I'm going to come back over and give this even brighter white. And you don't wanna cover up all of, your, um, all of your tree. You have to have those pockets of greenery, that pocket of dark that you see in between to be able to um, have that dimension and shape. So again, just tapping on the toe, working that in. You always wanna blend it. So blend it on the toe. Don't just go straight after you've loaded it or you'll get a big blob. And then again, just tap, 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 mostly along the top of those branches. But what I wanna show you, I'm gonna zoom in just a second and show you how you can create a branch that's not there, okay? To give your tree some fullness. So I can come here and almost do like a branch is coming forward, okay? And then come out and put some of that white on here. I can, right here, same thing, I can bring that forward. And the fix is if you get too light, you can always come back with some of your green and your Payne's gray. Okay, so let me zoom out so I can show you that whole tree. Hello, <laughs> a little heavy on the finger there, Sandy. Zoom in, zoom out. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe my brush off really, really well. Pick up more white on the toe of that brush and I wanna come in and just hit some branches so with a little bit more white. Okay. And as we know, white is not white, right? I mean, if you want something to be super, super bright and white, yes, you have to use white. But if it's just plain white sitting on top of this tree, it's going to look a little off. Whereas having just that slight tint that you still have in your brush from that green is going to create a really pretty white snow that's slightly tinted not dirty, but tinted, <laughs> um, to give you a really pretty look, okay? So, and then I take my white, just put that right over, okay? Would make a really pretty card, right? I mean, if you have some green from that um, tree reflected on the snow, you'll have some of that green down there and just go right over it. I do that just to get that paint off my brush too, as I'm painting them. 
Okay, and I'm not looking at the comments, it's killing me. But I will go back, I promise I will go back and look at them and answer anything that maybe I've missed. All right, so thanks guys, thanks for sharing. Yes, you share, like, comment. Thank you, Chris. Um, and I will do the drawings tomorrow for uh, those two prizes that I shared with you guys at the beginning. So you could keep going. You could come in and I wish I grabbed it and I didn't. Um, some glamour dust. So let me show you on this piece that I did. So this, um, I have a book, <laughs> Viking Woodcrafts um, has it. And this is in, let me see if I have them on here. I do not, but I need to add them. Okay, so this is in my, um, my book. And I painted the tree the same way, but white. But then do you see the sparkle on it? So it has uh, glamour dust. And a cool way to put glamour dust on, you can do it while the paint's wet, or you can use matte medium, okay? And just dab it kind of here and there, sprinkle your glamour dust on um, to get that really pretty sparkle, okay? So let's do our tree again. And this time I'm gonna do it on, let's find a different color card here. I love these um, like mat board that my friend Ryan gave me. We'll do like this dark navy blue. Okay, and let me show you. I will go ahead and use um, Americana, just your regular paint. I have um, black forest green. I am going to use, I want it to be darker, so I'm going to use a little bit of paint's gray. Another color I typically use with my... Um, Trees is my favorite green plantation pine. Um, and then for kind of that yellow, nice little bright uh, hint of highlight, antique green. And I'm going to even throw in a little bit of matcha green. Okay. And then, of course, white. Okay. And of course, we have our, our regular white. So, back to this 3 8 angle, and I use the, um, will you be showing how to do the branches coming forwards? Uh, yes, Brenda. Um, using the matte medium so much since joining the tribe. I know I love matte medium, don't you? Hi, Sue. So good to see you on. All right, let's zoom in here. Okay. So I'm going to load, you know what? That's on blue. It's not going to show up. I'm going to do my white tree on there. So let's do on the lighter blue. Okay. So I'm going to load my brush up with that black forest green, a um, little bit of Payne's gray because I want it nice and dark. I don't really mix it down to one color. I brush mix. Pick it up, pick it up. So black forest green or plantation pine. Payne's Gray, again, sliding on that chisel edge to get your stem. And I try not to do my trunk solid. Sometimes you see that through um, your painting. So I just kind of give myself a little placement. Now, you could, when you're starting out, when doing on cardstock or cards, just do them at medium first or just so. Um, D, you can just do them right on the card sometimes, but a little matte medium will help you, you know, have a little bit more control of that paint. So if you wanted to, like you knew you had that much space for your tree, okay? You could draw a little triangle to give yourself some placement. And then always very little up at the top, like very, very tiny strokes. And then stroke out, stroke out. And I'm not pushing hard. I'm just tapping. And I know that I want to go beyond that triangle shape. Okay. So, again, just come down. Come down. Tap, 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 tap. And I'm running out of paint. So, pick up more paint. And I do like to, like I said, I'll come down and then I like to put almost like that little V on the end. 
that's come right down here. So maybe one that comes more forward. Let me put one in there. And then just keep going. I paint them much better when I paint them fast. Um, but to kind of slow that train down so that you can see my hand and the motion that I'm doing, slightly up, slightly curved. Okay, again, just that dark green, paints gray. I'm going to paint this one coming straight down. All right, oops, see how bright that, I don't, that's not a color I go to. I don't know why I grabbed it today, but that black forest green is, um, it's a little on the bright side. That Payne's gray is really gonna tone it down. Okay, so let's just get some of those. And I don't worry too much about, I mean this, if I were just doing a green tree, I could fix all this up even with my next color that I use, my lighter green, okay? Like if I didn't have a green tree that had um, snow on it. And it did my, yep, that one has snow on it. Okay, so now with that same mixture, I'm gonna come back in and I'm just gonna fill in by tapping on the toe of that brush right in here just to thicken up Beef that tree up just a little, okay? Then I'm gonna wipe it off really well. Come in with some antique green. So this time I am gonna go just to the antique green. I have that other color you can see still in my brush. I'm just gonna blend that on the toe. Just tap that, get a little excess off. And then I don't do a lot at the top. It's, it's not real easy to get a tiny little dot up there. So, and then just randomly tap the toe of the brush. I hope you guys will give this a try. And if you do, please share um, pictures here on this, um, in the comment section, share a picture with me. Let me see if you give it a go and how it went for you. Okay, so again, just that antique green, dab, 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 get too much. I typically just take my finger and dot it. So I'm gonna get a little, and again, I like to do like just a little snow. It's on paper, so I was taking that paint right out of my brush. All right, I'm gonna wipe that off really well. I'm gonna pick up some matcha green on the toe of the brush, work that in. So again, toe only, that's the longest side of an angle brush. Pick some of that up, work that in. A little too much. Again, just kind of dot, but you don't want to cover up all your dark. You want to keep that dark in there. Okay, so love that matcha green, so pretty. Okay, and for these down here that come closer to us, coming out, we'll wanna make a little bit brighter. So we're gonna do that with our white. And again, keeping a little green in there. So bring that down. That one comes forward. Okay. So there we have our highlight of green. The um, pencil line is driving me crazy. So <laughs> let me get that off. But you see how it helped with your shape? So you can always give yourself guidelines. Let's zoom in just a little more. We'll put some white on there. So I'm gonna wipe off my brush really, really well. 
Oh, thank you, Sandra. <clears throat> okay, so white on the toe of the brush. Blend that on your palette to work it in. And then oftentimes I'll just come to my paper towel and just kind of tap it. That'll take some of the excess off. Now, when you're starting out to draw your tree, I start up here. When I start with my snow, oftentimes I'll come down here because if I go right there with a heavily loaded brush, um, I might get too much. Very lightly tap and then I can bring some of that snow back up. Okay. And then I'll show you another color that looks really pretty on here. Again, just tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. Making sure you don't cover up all the dark. You want to make sure that you have those pockets of dark, that mix of color. You can still see a little bit of that antique green and the matcha green. Okay. Again, just very lightly tapping these that come forward. Again, just tap them along that top edge. So like on this one here, I have a branch that goes out here. Kind of keep that white on the top edge. I'll show you how to fix that. Along the top of this one and down. Oops. I didn't touch my paper towel first. Did you see that? I got a big old blob there. But that's good because I can show you how to fix it. I'm all about that. Okay, and then some white on those branches. Okay, now I can come back with some of my green, a little bit of Payne's Gray. Kind of get rid of anywhere that's maybe too blobby, too big, um, and take care of that. Okay, then I'll come back with just my white. And I can be a little bit heavier if I want to have more snow on my tree and brighter. Again, tapping on the toe of that angle brush. I was looking for my fluid acrylic purple, but I just grabbed some lavender. Okay, and I'm going to rinse out my brush. And on the toe, I'm going to pick up a little bit of purple. Lavender is a really good color underneath white as well. So you can kind of get just a little tint of that purple in. Okay, and that part of my tree right here is looking like it needs a little bit more definition. So let's get a little bit more of that snow on there. And then some snow down here. Okay, so fun and easy, right? Again, just with the toe of that brush. Put a little bit of that purple in the snow. It's a little bit of that lavender. But see, even just starting out with the green, um, you're not gonna have that show. It's just gonna look like it slightly tinted from that reflection on the trees that are around right under your snow. Okay, so let me zoom out. You can see the difference kind of the fluid the regular americana the fluid acrylics um, i could sit there and play with them all day make more snow um, but i do want to show you a white one on black i think that will be fun Ooh, let's get a better a better board hi mary hi jerry you said you use a rain brush um i don't sylvia i use a um i use an angle brush for my trees so 
I have used several different brushes over the years, flats, angles, um, mezzaluna brushes even. Let's see if I have one of those handy. I've been painting at my other workstation and most of my brushes, hello, are, um, I moved over there. But no, an angle brush is ideal for painting your trees. Okay, so 3 8 angle, I'm gonna pick up white. And I really wish I brought the glitter in. All righty. Does using the toe of the angle brush destroy the chisel edge? Kathy, no, I'm not using it. I mean, you can see I still have a nice chisel edge there. I'm not pushing very hard on the, um, on the toe of the brush, okay? So I know I wanna get my trunk in. And then turn it over, the heel straight up into the sky. And just lightly tap, lightly tap, lightly tap, okay? And even if I'm running out of color, I still keep going. I've got green in that brush. I see that coming out. But just to kind of get my initial shape, just keep going until you need to add more paint. And you're gonna see, so see all the little dabs? You can see all those little dabs. The toe of the brush. Tap, 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 tap. Okay, I'm gonna come out. So when things come forward, they're going to come down almost straight or at an angle. But like with a lot of things, it's gonna be a hot mess till you get in there and fluff it up, fill in those areas, not too much. Okay, then I'll come back with my white, fill in some areas. Now let's fix this tree up, okay? So white on the toe of the brush. I'm gonna be a little bit more methodical about where I put this white. Because that color underneath, almost that gray tone, is gonna to help give my tree and my branches more dimension. And I'm doing something I always tell <laughs> when I'm teaching class. Uh, are you breathing? Make sure you're breathing. I'm sitting here holding my breath. I don't know why, but... But see how that will start to build up compared to that? And again, a little bit of um, um, matte medium on there and some glitter. Oh, so pretty. Came out too far, too soon. Okay. A hot mess. <laughs> oh, yes. Don't you love that when you're in the middle of um, painting something and you're just like, oh, this is looking like a hot mess. What am I going to do? Usually on the other side of that, when you push through it, that's where your really pretty painting is. You just have to push through. Sometimes that's hard. Okay, now this tree is a little too full. I typically don't make them this full. I would come back in with some black and go in between and fix that up. So, coming back to this one where there's glitter. Let's see, does that have... It's quite the glare on it, doesn't it? But you can see those little small strokes that slightly go up, slightly curved, right? And then... Even these, where you have that pocket of, let's move that down here, those pockets of dark underneath and the little dabs of snow on top. And this is what I was talking about, the purple. When you come back in 
and you just do almost like a little glaze or a wash of purple on that snow. So I did it on that right hand side to give it a little bit of a shadow and kept that left side a little bit brighter and whiter as the light's kind of coming from that direction. Okay, so fun and easy, I think with an angle brush. Um, hopefully you do as well. I'm gonna look at the comments. I needed this, I need to work on my trees. Oh, thank you. I think white trees are beautiful too. And again, I just, I wanted to do this piece um, just blue, white, so it's pr uh, Prussian blue, white, and Payne's gray is the only thing that I used on that piece. Um, and of course, uh, Glamour Dust. So anyway, I hope you guys, hopefully that helped. Um, this is certainly not what we're going for. <laughs> in fact, I almost want to come in on this gray one and do some white and just fly through it so that you can see the... Um, one that's not so full, let's say that. Okay, so I'm gonna slide my stem, my branch. And you could even, depending on what it is you're painting on, you could even put a little bit of Payne's Gray in your um, brush to make it a little on the gray side before doing the white. That will um, give you that nice little shadow underneath. Okay, so skipping those spaces, which I did not do very well on that other white tree. On the toe of the brush, So spaced out, bring that one a little forward. A little bit of snow. Okay, then coming back with your white and let's, sometimes I'll come back in and make the top of my tree a little bit taller, especially if I make those first little strokes too big. Okay, so easy little fix there. So let's zoom in. Alrighty. So yes, on the, um, so on this one, I have um, on my website, it's called Winter Wonderland. Um, and step by step pictures of the trees, everything in the background, the blue and white, the one with the church that is in a book um, at Viking Viking Woodcrafts. Um, I don't have any copies left. Now I'm gonna come back with just white and then also that red truck, Old Fashioned Christmas, I have that on my website and you can also get that at cdwood.com. So, okay, and then just heavier white. But again, if you're gonna do white trees, why not add a little bit of sparkle? <laughs> it's a little glamour dust, even a little bit of holographic illusions would be pretty. Okay, and this is probably my number one tip too when trying to get the shape first, then to fill it in, to come in and beef up that center just a little, not with big heavy paint, but just to take away some of that space, leaving the space here so that it's airy and has some dimension. And then again, just tap, 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 tap. It works better if you say it out loud. Tap, 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 tap. Okay. Come forward here, bring that down. And then again, just a little. You could do, um, you know, even further out. So getting that shape, filling it in, 
with all your colors, your final color, and then seeing if everything is proportional. If you need to, you know, elongate this one over here to kind of match the other side. Doesn't have to be exact. Now, once I've done a white tree, um, again, I typically will start with um, a dirty brush. So I might have Payne's Gray in it, a little bit of white. But what you can also do is come back in with a little bit of Payne's Gray or a little bit of purple. And you can pop in a couple little shadow areas if you need to. And that's just a little tiny touch of that Payne's Gray. Okay, I'm gonna wipe my brush off, pick up some white, again, on the toe of the brush only, and just slightly add some of that white around so that my shadow doesn't look like I just slapped it in the middle of my branch. Okay. So, much better than the other one, <laughs> right? Than the other white, let me see. Oh, do I have it? Nope, let's see. Um, I don't have, oh goodness, Corey just about knocked something over. I was looking for the, um, holographic illusions. This is a good medium to have. They also have pearl, uh, pearlescent colors, but the pearlizing medium you can mix with some white and that will give you a really pretty, um, pearlescent look. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me hold this up. So you get that nice little shimmer and shine from that pearl. See that pearlizing medium? You can also use um, metallic luster. Okay, great product. Usually it's for, um, you can run your finger on it. Uh, it works beautifully on um, furniture, like to gild something. But you see that shimmer and shine? And the thing is you can use this with a wet brush. So I'm gonna get my brush wet, work it back and forth onto my White Frost Metallic Luster. They do carry this at Hobby Lobby. Um, all the way past the paint usually is where it is. Not sure about Michael's. Um, and then you can also always get it at um, decoart.com. So, okay, so with that, I can come in. Oh, I love that. Let me go. Now you don't wanna put too much water in your brush. I want to be able to control where this is going. And then if this is too wet, I typically will leave it open just for, you know, 10 minutes or so to let that evaporate so that I don't um, grow mildew in my metallic luster, which is a solid, um, creamy, um, it just moves and you can use it in watercolor. I've used it on like the throat of a hummingbird, on um, dragonfly wings. It's transparent or you can make it more opaque with heavier layers. But I wanna hold this up, not sure if it's showing up too much just yet. But then get some of that shimmer, shimmer, shimmer. Oh, okay. So let's hold that up and see if there's any kind of a shine or metallic. You can use metallic paint for that matter, okay? But um, glamour dust sprinkled on there, hello, would just be the bee's knees, and I wish I grabbed it. 
before we sat down and started. So again, of all my projects, probably my favorite with the trees. And then also um, the one I just taught at Oklahoma. Um, and the, see, those trees have even more dark on them than those. I didn't put purple on them. But anyway, I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Um, like I said, planning lots of things for January. And um, here on my Facebook group, on my Facebook page, and then also on YouTube. Love it. So drying time for the metallic luster, it doesn't take that long to dry. Um, the other thing is you can buff it. So once it's completely dry, you can buff it and it brings up the sheen even more. Uh, and you don't need to do anything to finish it. It has a built-in sealer. So once it's on there, buff it to shine it up even more and um, brighten it and just looks really pretty. Shimmery, shimmery and sparkly and fun. So you're so welcome. You're so welcome, Sue. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, again, I hope you will play around with those trees, add some glitter to it to make it sparkly and fun and um, have a great day. I'm hoping to be back next Sunday. I will post and let you know, probably be a quick little tutorial um, and maybe a little free download or something since we're getting close to Christmas. Um, appreciate you guys so very much. Thank you for being here. Thanks for watching my lives. Thanks for supporting me. Um, and with those likes and comments and shares, I'll do the drawing tomorrow and post that on my page here. Okay. Thank you guys. Have a fantastic day. Merry, Merry Christmas early. Um, but I will see you guys definitely before then. All right. Bye.